live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering ServiceNow Knowledge 2018. Brought to you by ServiceNow. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of ServiceNow Knowledge 18. We are theCUBE, we are the leader in live tech coverage. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Dave Vellante. We're joined by Jason Woyan. He is the Managing Director, Global ServiceNow Practice Lead at Accenture. Thanks That's so correct. much for your, your, your returning guest, your Thank CUBE you, veteran. Yeah. Many times, CUBE alone. <laughs> yes. Thanks for noticing. Back to the early days. <laughs> <laughs> But for those who have not had the pleasure of watching your CUBE clips, can you explain what your role is and what you do at Accenture? Sure, I'm the Global ServiceNow Practice Lead at Accenture. I'm responsible for, for our global capabilities in ServiceNow uh, for the company of Accenture. So, you know, everything to do with ServiceNow from our consulting capability to our training capability. Um, at Accenture we also have kind of what we call three estates of ServiceNow. We have the CIO estate, I know you had Andrew Wilson on the, the Cube yesterday. And of course we are fully deployed ServiceNow customer in, in our CIO's office, one of the top 10 customers of ServiceNow. Uh, we also utilize ServiceNow in our AO, IO, and BPO lines of business. Now in that case, that's a, that's a go-to-market relationship where we're selling things like HR outsourcing that is platformed and delivered on ServiceNow. And of course, not, uh, last but not least, our consulting capabilities. Uh, just over 3,000 skilled customer, or skilled ServiceNow resources across the, the world, uh, what makes us the largest practice for ServiceNow in the, in the world as well. And, uh, and those are our three estates of ServiceNow and Accenture. So don't hate me for saying this, but when we first started following ServiceNow, I remember Frank Slootman said to me, Dave, this thing is a rocket ship. We're going to blow through a billion dollars. We're going to be the next great software company. And one of the things Jeff and I said was, well, the ecosystem has to grow. There was a company like Cloud Sherpas, which nobody ever heard of, which were specialists in the space. Now you fast forward five, six, seven years, Accenture gets yep. into the game, other big SIs have gotten to the game, and it is the real deal. It feels like the, the, the next you know, ERP <laughs> of the modern era. I, in my view, there are three main big surges going on in the ServiceNow ecosystem, and you can kind of tie them back to the CEO. So you had the early day with Fred Luddy, of course, you know, kind of the zero to 150 million stage of, of ServiceNow. Of course, when uh, Frank Slootman came in in the, the 2011 timeframe, you know, you had the next big surge, see them getting IPO ready, you see them really uh, ruggedizing their commercial selling capabilities, their delivery methodology capabilities, et cetera. And then we move all the way to today, and with John Donahoe, you see the third surge. And here, you see every GSI on the planet wanting to do something with ServiceNow for a lot of the reasons that I just discussed. I mean, ServiceNow is a terribly strategic tool in Accenture across multiple aspects. Of course, our go-to-market aspects, our consulting aspects, and of course, our internal use of the platform as well. It's not easy for software companies to reach escape velocity, certainly many of them can become unicorns and have a billion dollar valuation. It's really hard for them to get to a billion dollars of revenue. ServiceNow has blown through that, you know, they'll probably do three billion or close to it this year. So they really are in many ways the next great software company, but you know, VMware got there, Red Hat obviously doing really well. What are your perspectives on the software ecosystem? I mean, personally, I think it's great that we see more competition, Yeah. But there seems to be always this pressure to consolidate. What do you, what's, what's your sense of what's happening now? Well, you see a lot of consolidation that ServiceNow is doing to round out their capabilities as a platform, and I think that's terribly important. That's how people want to consume technology right now. So we've spent a ton of time at this event, and you've heard ServiceNow as well, talking about experience management, service management, you know, trying to get things away from you know, how do I do this, and going to why would I do this versus how, and of course you utilize platforms to, to really set that tenancy. When you have a platform like a ServiceNow that has you know, the ability to turn on intelligent automation, machine learning capabilities across your platform, the ability to turn on chatbots across your platform, analytics across your platform, knowledge across your platform, and of course manage workflow the way they do with portals, et cetera. I mean, it, it, there's no reason to go somewhere else, but more importantly, the strategy underneath it, you know, ServiceNow is an out, come of something that's very important. You can't, you can't use AI, you can't use chatbots, you can't automate if you don't have what we call a, a lake of data, a data lake. You've got to have that kind of single source of information so that you can do those compounded workflows, get that automation benefit, and then when you start laying things like AI, machine learning, intelligent automation, chatbots in there, 
actually, you have to have the data in there to make the suggestions, right? To do the, to do the modeling and the analyses to find those opportunities. So I think what you're going to see and what you're actually seeing right now is consolidations on platforms. And those platforms are kind of being used as a ubiquitous glue code for everything else behind the infrastructure. And really looking at, you know, this is, this is the employee first experience. This is, this is, uh, this is where the, the, last, you know, the last yard of, of, the, uh, of the field is, is being delivered to the individual. The red zone. Yeah. So, the timing of the Accenture acquisition was, was actually fortuitous because it, it, it coincided with ServiceNow's you know, push into the, the rest of the enterprise. Accenture obviously deep into you know, lines of business, board level, yeah. C-suite, et cetera. Talk about how, how that's changed the whole relationship, motion with your customers, how you've gone deeper and described sort of that dynamic. Yeah, so um, obviously within Accenture, our diamond clients are, are paramount to the way we run our business and, and who we are and, as, a, as a business. And what's great is we're seeing more and more of those, those clients where they have comprehensive relationships with Accenture, bringing service now to bear in that, in that conversation. And actually, again, using it as an overarching capability to help get things done better. Um, you know, it can be very austere to sit at a Siebel console or an Oracle console or you know those types of things. And we're actually just like using ServiceNow to kind of keep that from having to happen. But you're doing the same transaction in the back end. And again, like I said, you know, once you get some of those data points in there, it tends to kind of start to gain some momentum because you get a little bit of automation here or a little bit of uh, automation there, and then suddenly that connects you to other, you know, aspects of the enterprise and other consolidation points. What makes Accenture different? You got all the SIs are now in, elbowing their way in. We want a piece of the action. Yeah. Why Accenture? Well, the, the ego in me says it's because we're number one. We have the largest single certified pool of resources across the globe. Uh, there's nobody bigger than us. There's nobody that does more influence revenue than ServiceNow than us. And there's no one with higher customer satisfaction than us. We actually got that award two days ago from ServiceNow. So if, if you value those things, that's why you should work with Accenture. But more importantly than that, We've really spent a lot of time making sure that we're doubling down on our methodologies, we're doubling down on our thought leadership, we're leveraging our capabilities that we're you know, trialing and piloting in our CIO's office across the 450,000 person company called Accenture. We're obviously leveraging the things we learn in our AOIO BPO practices where we have embedded service down to those go-to-market services. We're bringing that all back to our consulting practice and, and, and it's accretive to, to not only the way we handle CIO, AOIO, BPO, but a way we handle our customers from a consulting perspective as well. It's the, it's the customer-centric approach. It is, yeah. it is. Well, Jason, thanks so much for coming on the program. Certainly. It's always fun to have you on theCUBE. Thanks a lot. Great to see you. Thanks. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. We will have more from theCUBE's live coverage of ServiceNow Knowledge 18 in just a little bit.